Welcome guys, in this video we are going to discuss this Harrison Beach chapter mitral valve prolapse and this video has been designed in such a fashion that completion of MCQ will lead to completion of the chapter. This is a short topic, we will finish very quickly. All right. So coming to the first question it says, what is the primary pathology in mitral valve prolapse? Now what is mitral valve actually? You know heart has got a four chambers that is right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle and all of those chambers are separated by a valvular pathway which directs the flow of blood. So right atrium and right ventricle is separated by a tricuspid valve and left atrium and left ventricle is separated by a valve which is bicuspid in origin also known as the mitral valve alright. So prolapse of this mitral valve is known as mitral valve prolapse. Now question is why is the prolapse? Why is the prolapse occurred? For some unknown reason, for some unknown reason there is either myxomatous degeneration of the valve and it can be due to the accumulation of any storage products like glycosaminoglycan which are most common causes. It result into excessive or redundant mitral valve tissue leading to prolapse. Now one thing to keep in mind is that this myxomatous degeneration not only involves the mitral valve, it can also involve the tricuspid valve as well as the aortic valve. Now what is the pathology that will occur if there is prolapse of this mitral valve? So, let us zoom in here. So, so, there is LA that is left atrium and left ventricle and if there is prolapse of this valve, it will low to a regurgitant flow during systole from left ventricle to left atrium leading to mitral regurgitation and this is the most common cause of presentation and pathologic presentation in case of mitral valve prolapse. Now, what happens is due to this prolapse there is elongation, redundation and rupture of the quadritentini that leads to this mitral regurgitation. So what happens? There is quadritentini attached to the valves. Due to the prolapse there is either elongation, so either elongation, redundation or rupture that lead to prolapse of mitral valve all right so coming to the question it says what is the primary pathology in mitral valve prolapse so mitral stenosis regurgitation dilated left atrium mitral regurgitant and mitral stenosis so obviously answer is mitral regurgitation this is the pathology for which the patient will come to you now what is the most common cause of mitral regurgitation most common cause of mitral regurgitation in india or in developing country is rheumatic heart disease and it is so much common that there is common saying that first most common, second most common as well as the third most common cause is rheumatic heart disease. Now if the question is asked what is the most common cause of primary mitral regurgitation? Most common cause of primary mitral regurgitation is mitral prolapse, alright, okay. So this is the most common cause, okay. Let us move into the next question. Uh, mitral blood prolapse is least commonly associated with which connective tissue disorder? So, as you can see there is myxomatous degeneration of the mitral bulb. It is more commonly affected in some connective tissue congenital disorder and most common one is the Marfan disease. Marfan disease is the most common. So, this is the most common. Also it is involved in alert donor syndrome as well as osteogenous imperfecta but not reported with Down syndrome. Even the most common congenital abnormality of the heart in Down syndrome is atrioventricular septal disease, alright. So answer here is Down syndrome. Now, now here one thing is uh, if you check the mitral blood prolapse the pathogenesis of mitral blood prolapse. So if there is mitral blood prolapse, there will be papillary muscle dysfunction, which lead to rupture, 
of quadi tendini and formation of MR that is material regurgitation. This material regurgitation again leads to material bed prolapse and forms a forms a vicious cycle. This is the primary pathogenesis of material bed prolapse. Now, this quadri tendini as well as material regurgitation rupture part can lead to regional ventricular dysfunction. All right. Okay. So, if you look at the structure here, okay. So, here we can see these are the mitral leaflet area. All right. These are the mitral leaflets, and these are the quadri muscles, quadri tendini. So, it is due to mainly myxomatous degeneration of the material bulb. So, here you can see this cordis are focally enlarged, cordis are focally enlarged as well as thickened, but no fusion and rupture is seen in this case alright. So, for sake of knowledge this part is the left atrium and this part is the ventricle, ventricular vasculature papillary muscle can be seen in the background. Now, this is from the view from the left atrium, you can see this is anterior mitral leaflet, this part, this is anterior mitral leaflet, this is posterior leaflet, mitral leaflet which is gone into prolapse stage due to multiple folding has developed, this is P1, P2, P3. So, this is a PML, PML posterior mitral leaflet prolapse picture, all right. Okay. Same you can see there is a billowing of the prolapse of the entire middle leaflet of the posterior part here. So, there is billowing here. It is actually nothing but 3D trans esophageal echocardiographic image showing the mitral bulb. It helps this 3D trans esophageal echo helps in the mitral bulb surgery for intraoperative guiding during surgery during mitral repair. All right. Okay. Let us move into the next question. So, it is about the clinical feature and it is asking about what is the typical age group at which mitral bulb disease is commonly diagnosed. So, uh, if you see mitral bulb disease is usually more common in female more than male, but if surgery is required it is more in case of males and females. Surgery is required if it is occurs in males and age of presentation is usually adolescent to early adulthood like 15 to late adolescent to early adult to, to 30 years of age is the presentation, whereas it can present and in this group female group is more predominant. This is the most common part, but if it males and it is more than 50 years, this is the part which requires more of a surgical intervention, all right. So, as the question says, what is the typical age group at which metal bulb disease is commonly diagnosed? Obviously, it is the adult group or adolescent variety. So, best answer to choose from the above two is the adult one, all right. It is not neonate, it is not elderly, okay. So, coming to the presentation, how do they present? The most is the common is asymptomatic during echocardiography for any other reason, MBP metal product products is diagnosed and sometimes it can be due to present as arrhythmia. And if there is any sort of degeneration or change in the bulb, it can lead to even endocarditis as anaerobic bacteria can obviously grow into this get a place to grab, grow and lead to endocarditis. As well as it can develop into source into septic embolic phenomena, pulmonary embolism, all right. So, presentation can be asymptomatic, arrhythmia, endocarditis and embolic. Among arrhythmia, the one which is most commonly seen is the ventricular premature complex. This is the most common one. Apart from this, we can see PSVT, VT as well as atrial fibrillation. Now, if arrhythmia develops, this is the symptom with which patient will come to you, they will come to you palpitation, lightheadedness as well as syncope like presentation. Okay. So, coming to the next question, which of the following symptoms is commonly associated with mitral bulb prolapse? So, I have just said now, 
So hemoptysis means pulmonary embolism is the presentation. Ascites is very rare, only right sided head pillow. Clubbing of finger is usually not seen. Palpitation is due to the arrhythmia part as well as light headed and syncope cantabula. So palpitation is the symptom at which the patient will come to. All right. Okay. So now coming to clinical feature and examination part, what we can hear in case of material bar prolapse. Okay. So, clinical feature is usually not so much significance. In auscultation, what is the classic auscultative finding? This is the next question asking about. So, if you see, we have got two main heart sound. One is S1, another is S2. All right. So, S1 signifies closure of the mitral and tricuspid blood valve and H2 is closure of the aortic as well as pulmonary valve. Now what happens in um, mitral valve prolapse? Mitral valve prolapse, the closure of the mitral valve is delayed and due to this late closure during the systolic phase, there will be a mid systolic click, okay. There will be mid systolic click. So coming to this question, the classic oscillatory finding associated with mitral valve prolapse is Yes, this is systolic ejection click. Now, important part here is to understand, let us look into the video also. You can see this is the right sided heart, the right sided part, uh, right atrium, right atrium, right ventricle and left atrium and left ventricle. These two part are the mitral bulb. Now in the video you can obviously see during systole this is the posterior reflect. Posterior reflect is not able to close properly. How to identify posterior reflect and anterior reflect? Leaflet which is close to the interventricular septum is the anterior reflect and which is close to beyond that is the posterior reflect. So posterior reflect is not able to close. So, there is posterior mitral reflect prolapse and there is delayed closure which leads to the mid systolic click. Now, important thing here is to identify the effect of the dynamic auscultation. All right. So, what will happen when there is patient is standing or doing valsalva? It will lead to decrease in the preload. All right. It will lead to decrease in the preload and decrease in left ventricular volume. So, systole phase will end early resulting in early mid systolic click. Whereas, condition which leads to increase in the preload as in case of squatting or hand grip causes increase in preload, increase in LV volume it will lead to late mid systolic click all right okay now coming to the next question it is says the what imaging modality is commonly used to diagnose mitral valve prolapse uh, it is not easily seen in chest x-ray ecg cannot there is no specific abnormality uh, rhythm abnormality for mitral valve prolapse of course psvt vt vpc is seen vpc is the most common but this is not specific for mvp Cardiac MRI obviously can diagnose, echo can diagnose, but echo is the most commonly used modality and easiest, easier one, cheaper one to diagnose is mitral valve prolapse. Now coming to echocardiographic finding, what is the specific thing, what is the cutoff to say that the person has got uh, prolapse? One thing we need to check is there is two minimum, two millimeter of systolic displacement of mitral blood leaflet in left atrium okay so there should be a 2 millimeter of systolic displacement of the mitral blood leaflet in the left atrium to call it the mitral blood prolapse okay so also beside echocardiographic imaging we can need to see colored doppler flow as well as continuous doppler to assess the mitral regurgitant and jet okay so here you can see. So, this is the echocardiographic imaging and this is the 
long axis view you can see this part is left atrium left ventricle and this is the aortic opening and left ventricular outflow tract now between left ventricle and left atrium is the mitral valve annulus all right so during systole during systole there are two point drawn between the mitral valve annulus and line is drawn and if if a mitral valve arches at least 2 mm above the annulus as shown here it is considered to be a mitral valve prolapse all right okay so this prolapse can be of two types again once again this can be due to now this prolapse can be anterior mitral leaflet prolapse or posterior mitral prolapse and which will lead to the chat of the mitral regurgitant now considering this to be anterior this to be posterior consider anterior mitral leaflet to be prolapsed okay so anterior mitral leaflet is prolapsed then uh, we are seeing from the view from the left atrium to the left ventricle all right so jet will be directed to the posterior as anterior leaflet is prolapsed so if the jet is directed posterior then murmur of mr will radiate to back all right so murmur of mitral regurgitation will radiate to back if there is anterior mitral leaflet prolapse whereas in case of posterior mitral leaflet prolapse the j eccentric jet will direct it towards anterior and the murmur will radiate to the base of the heart all right murmur will radiate to the base of heart so what is the concept here concept is in aml prolapse murmur radiates to axilla as well as back whereas in pml prolapse murmur radiates to to base of heart okay all right now this is again diagram for the harrison it shows look uh, this is left atrium this is left ventricle and this is the left ventricle outflow tract you can see this is the mitral annulus and if you draw a straight line during the systole phase mitral valve is arching above the annulus in the left atrium and it is obviously you can check measure also it should be above the 2 mm so this is a case of a mitral valve prolapse and this is a particular case of a billowing of the mitral valve which is known as barlow's disease which is known as barlow's disease so what are the other name of mitral valve prolapse? The other name of mitral valve prolapse are based on its finding as well as like it is also known as floppy valve syndrome, Barlow's disease, it is also known as billowing mitral leaflet, billowing mitral leaflet disease as well as based on the clinical auscultatory finding systolic systolic click murmur this is all right okay so here you can see the arrhythmias which are it can present with so again narrow cure cure complex irregular interval undulating or flat puf this is atrial fibrillation all right atrial fibrillation uh, these are the VPCs where the VPCs can be seen and there is a narrow cure, this white cure complex tachycardia, this is a white cure complex tachycardia, this is VPCs, all right, okay. So these are the arrhythmias which can be seen in case of mitral valve prolapse. Now coming to the next question, it says about the in severe mitral regurgitation along with left ventricular systolic dysfunction in case of mitral valve prolapse, what is the best strategy and management? Now, uh, if you do not know the, even the answer, it has said of the severe cases along with compromise of the function, physiological function, obviously you need to repair or not only medical management is repaired. So in such cases for repair, for repair and versus replacement, remember in case of mitral regurgitation always replacement is prepared, but if it is due to 
primary material regurgitation and it is due to miximeter degeneration or material blood prolapse. In such cases, repair is preferred. Okay, all right. So, what are the medical management you need to do? Medical management is based on the symptom. If there is symptom of arrhythmia, you need to manage the arrhythmia like rate and rhythm control and usually beta blockers are preferred. You can also need to anticoagulate, anticoagulate the patient with the chart VSC scoring. All right, chart VSC scoring. As well as if there is a risk of infective endocarditis, prophylaxis antibiotic can be given, but it is only indicated when there is prior history of infective endocarditis. So that's it. That's about the material blood prolapse.